I am celebrating a milestone today. Today is episode 30. Wow, where has the time gone? On Monday morning, in my email inbox, I had two different emails. One of them said that most podcasts don't make it past the first five episodes. The other email said less than 1% of podcasts that are started ever create more than 10 episodes. Wow, that's an interesting number. Both emails pointed to the reason that most podcasts fail has to do with the why. Why did you start this project? Who are you serving? What are you wanting to achieve? If your why isn't strong enough, you're going to give up. My why is rock solid. I am here for you. I'm here for the long haul to support the stroke community and to bridge the gap between the discharge from rehabilitation and making a life you love. I know I'm preaching to the choir as many of you, my subscribers are in this community and you are on this journey. I see you. I am learning more every day about what you need. I understand what worries you and keeps you up at night. I am here to help by providing information, support, and resources. I want to tell you, just give you a hint about a conversation I had on Monday afternoon. I spoke with a gentleman who is a stroke survivor himself and has an incredible business supporting the stroke community and survivors. And I can't tell you any more about it just yet, but needless to say, he and I have some plans for the future. We're moving on topics now. I just wanted to tease that a little bit. Welcome to the Listen for Life podcast with Genevieve Richardson. Genevieve is a speech language pathologist rehabilitating adults with communication challenges after a stroke or due to a neurological impairment. Living with aphasia is hard. Caregiving is hard. You are not alone. Get equipped with knowledge from experts in the field and professionals you need to know. We'll hear stories and experiences from others who are navigating life with aphasia. So. Put your earphones in and take a walk outside. This isn't just a podcast. This is a community, a resource, and a support system. We're in this together. Do life. So, as you know, last weekend was the Texas Speech Language Hearing Association's annual convention, and it was held here in Austin, where I live. What a great convention. This year, 2023, it did not disappoint. Here are some takeaways from the convention. Number one, speech pathologists are passionate about what they do. I really, really, really love hearing about what other clinicians are doing, and it doesn't matter who their population is. I always find it invigorating and I just get a charge from their energy and I love having things that I can take back to my own clinic on Monday morning after a convention like this. But let me tell you just real quick about how does one even come to present at a convention? So once a convention is scheduled, there is what's called a call for papers. That's where anybody working in the field can submit a proposal for what they would want to talk about, what the duration is, and you know what the population is that they are serving. I love subject matter experts. I'm going to tell you in a few minutes about one of the courses I took. Speech conventions, especially something like a state convention like Tisha, they have tracks where you follow the kid track, you follow the adult track. If you're more interested in professional methods or teaching graduate students or you're interested in ethics or um, diversity, those kinds of things, you can follow those tracks and it's really easy to see all of the 
lectures that will be related to that track. One of the big takeaways I had from my adult track is there's a much higher incidence of what are called patient reported outcome measures. This is an exciting addition to the field in that we have many more tools to help quantify a patient's progress. Here's what I mean by that. Traditional testing can include what are called standardized measures. That's where a client is compared to people that are similar in education and age. And what we're trying to do is compare our person who's had a stroke to norm normal, those folks that have not had a stroke. Well, this addition of, they're called PROMs, patient reported outcome measures, is another way of measuring progress. And there's some really exciting tools out there. I'll just give you a couple names of them. Community Integration Questionnaire. What's so great about that one in particular is it measures the frequency of participation in a variety of activities and roles someone might be in when they're going out in the community. Another one is called the Community Integration Measure, which is similar to the Community Integration Questionnaire, but it asks slightly different questions. Then we have things like the Functional Activities Questionnaire, which looks at changes in function, hopefully improvement in function, on how somebody does things like cooking and speaking to the cashier at the grocery store, whatever the case may be. It looks at functional communication. These are just a couple of examples of additional ways us clinicians can integrate measures to show success of treatment. I've always been a functional therapist. I've worked in acute rehab and home care. I won't bore you with all that if you've heard previous episodes. But the point is, we can work at the impairment level, whether it's word finding or finding your thoughts and putting them into sentences, but we can also work at the functional level. How do you communicate to the cashier at the grocery store? How do you greet the mailman when he brings the mail to your house? That's functional. So it was just really exciting to see how many more individuals are incorporating these patient recorded outcome measures into their practice. Another big takeaway, I attended, it was a total of four hours, two hours each about the evaluation and treatment of motor speech disorders. That's a fancy term for dysarthria. Some of you may be aware of that term. Dysarthria has to do with how the muscles of your mouth move for the purpose of speech. There are actually seven different dysarthrias and each one starts with damage to a different area of the brain or the brain stem. So this clinician, her name is Jamie Payne Anderson. She's from the University of South Florida Center for Swallowing Disorders. She took a very complicated subject, which was how do you diagnose? What measures do you do? How do you train your ear to diagnose which of these seven dysarthria as a client has and what does it mean neurologically? What does it mean where that damage is in the brain? And then therefore that um, tells you how to provide treatment. She took this complicated subject and really made it tangible and understandable. And I was just so very excited to attend her course. Her handouts were fabulous. And needless to say, I'll be incorporating what I learned from her course into my ongoing practice. So one takeaway that I really want to share with you about dysarthria. And this is something I knew about, but I guess I needed reminding of, so I'm going to share it with you. 
dysarthria or a motor speech disorder can sometimes be the first sign of a neurologic condition. What does that even mean? You've probably heard of the disease amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. The first symptom of ALS can be slurred speech, whether it is there all the time or it comes and goes. Additionally, uh, if there are changes in the muscles of the tongue, you know what your tongue looks like. It's pink, it's round, you know. You brush your tongue in the morning, you know what your tongue looks like. Any changes to the body of your tongue, whether there's weakness on one side or you're getting divots in your tongue or there's this extra movement of the muscles of your tongue, that can be the first sign of a condition that you need to get diagnosed so that you can get into treatment. Dysarthria can be that first sign. Slurred speech, any change in speech, whether it's there all the time or it's intermittent, comes and goes. Get to your primary care doctor and get that checked out. Do not ignore it. So that is one big takeaway. It's scary. You don't want to hear it. I don't want to say it, but I feel it is my duty to share this with you because as scary as one of these possible diagnoses could be, it's much better to get into treatment and get ahead of it so that you can live your best life. So let's lighten this up a little. I know that's pretty heavy. Another big takeaway from, for me from the Tisha conference, I attended uh, a talk about the life participation approach to aphasia. Dr. Melinda Corwin out of Texas Tech University is very passionate about the life participation approach to aphasia, and it was her course that I took. Um, she and I struck up a conversation about it, and we just have a lot of synergies in how we think about treatment and how we are functional therapists, but there's even more I know that I can do to continue to support the community. So I'm not going to get into the life participation approach today because Melinda's going to be coming on to a future episode and then we're really going to get into it. Also another takeaway she brought to my attention this month in just three, actually three weeks from today, I'm going to be traveling to North Carolina to attend a multi-day conference and it's all about the life participation approach for aphasia. I'm going to be there with the researchers who came up with this, the ones that are continuing to advance this method and process, and I'm super excited to learn more about it today. All right, I'm wrapping it up. If you have any questions about a topic I covered today, please reach out to me. If you have a loved one, doesn't matter how long ago their stroke was, if they are motivated to improve their speech, their language, their thinking, please book a consultation. Go to dolifespeechpathology.com. You can't miss the buttons on there. Book a complimentary phone consultation. Let's have a conversation and see what we can do to help you improve your communication. Whether you book a consultation with me or not, I hope each of you will stay with me as I continue to put out episodes and there's some exciting things coming in the future, again, with more information, resources, and support for you as you continue your journey with aphasia. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going to leave you with a quote that I heard at the conference. I wish I knew who said it. Life is good. If it ain't, make it good. Let's make it good together. Until next time, have a fabulous day.
Thanks for tuning in to the Listen for Life podcast. We hope you feel empowered and supported. Head over to listenforlifepodcast.com to see the show notes with links and information from today's episode. Do you have a topic, a resource to share, or a guest recommendation? Inquiring minds want to know. Let us know in the comments section. Wishing you a fabulous week.